In this video, we will set up our IK leg rig for our through space walk cycle. Now, ideally, you've completed your second generation uh, custom robot. If you haven't or you're still working on it, you can go back even to this uh, block uh, rig and we can rig this guy uh, for this week's lesson. Um, if you've got your custom robot, uh, modeled and rigged, you can use that one. If you're not quite ready, you can use this one. And let me just show you, we could also import uh, some pieces, if you've got some pieces completed, and uh, insert them into this character. We're going to be talking about inverse kinematics, an inverse kinematic handle. And I'll, I'll demonstrate what that is in a moment. This is considered a forward kinematic, an FK. All of these joints are just animated directly. There is no rig to the skeleton. The skeleton is the only form of rigging that we have. We selected each of these joints and we set keys on those joints directly. Let's set up um, these legs though for that IK rig for this week's assignment. First, I want to get rid of this animation, right? Ideally, you have a saved, um, unanimated, rigged version, but if you didn't, this is how you could get back to scratch. We'll delete all of our channels. Uh, because there's nothing else in the scene, I'll just say delete all by type channels. And if you scrub through here now, you see that there's uh, no more animation. I want to select all the joints and zero them out. So, and I only want joints, so we'll come to show objects and uh, limit ourselves to joints. I'll hit the shift key to open that, and then we'll select all the joints. In the channel box, we'll come and we'll zero those out. Now, uh, I'm going to say clear below, just so you can see, I didn't have any of the surfaces selected. Um, I don't want to zero out any of those mesh, just, just the joints here. You can see as I scrub through, uh, that's just standing standing straight. Now, if you've got some parts that you'd like to incorporate here, um, you can import those. So you can say File, Import, and import any of the robot parts that you've already created. Um, I brought in this head and uh, demonstrating that oftentimes you'll model at a different size, and you'll uh, and this isn't even on the center line, and so we'll. Uh, bring this guy in and repair it. So we'll scale it down to size and we'll grid snap to get it on that center line. That's about right. And then um, we'll delete the original head. And you can do this for any of your parts. We'll show ourselves joints. Uh, I can yeah, we'll just slide this down. Let's let's make sure you're on the X, right? You grid snap this so that it's right in the middle, and we'll position it. If you need to change the joint position, you can because this is the terminal joint. You can just move it. If you had, if you're working with your four joint chain version, um, you would use the D key if you didn't want to change the position of that top terminal joint. But I'll pick the head and shift select that joint. Uh, if you're doing it in the outliner, right, pick the head. And then uh, sh uh, we would command select the neck joint and edit parent. And we can, I can demonstrate that this is now updated. Right, and everything is working. You want to test that so there's following properly and he can look around. So you can bring in, uh, if you're not completely done with your custom version, you can bring in uh, the parts that you have finished, at least to make this a little bit more interesting uh, to watch. Now, if you're working with your four joint chain version, you can skip this next step, but uh, I've opened that original uh, robot because I know everyone in the class has at least this one done. So we're going to have to create these terminal joints, which isn't, uh, isn't, isn't too difficult. We're going to come to Skeleton, Create Joints, and I, I don't even have to change uh, anything in the uh, dialog box. I'm just going to lay a joint out here. Don't even have to snap it. 
uh, because I'm going to snap it here to the toe. Make sure that your wireframe on shaded is on. And right, I grab this. We want to make sure that we see all three colors, green, red, and blue. I'm not constraining. But I am going to V snap, so V middle mouse button, and it snaps right to the toe. Let's do that again for the other one. We'll just say create joints. I'll just click there. We'll grab the move tool. Make sure you see all three colors. V key middle mouse button. Now, uh, I missed it. I missed my middle mouse button. I have a, a Mac mouse, and I have to get it right in the middle for that to work. But I got it that time. And we need to parent these in. So with that selected, I can shift select the ankle joint and hit lowercase p. And note, there is no geometry parented to this toe joint. It is functioning, or it will function as part of our rig. And then we'll grab that toe, shift select that ankle joint, not the mesh. And you want to look here in your outliner if, if that's not clear to you. Pick, the, pick our new toe joint, shift select the ankle joint. And note, you don't have left foot mesh selected. You don't have that selected. And I'll hit lowercase p. So now we've got uh, our four joint chain that we need. These terminal joints aren't, we, we need them not because we have a mesh parented to them, but because they're going to function as part of our rig. Now, I'm actually going to hide this guy, and let's talk about the IK in isolation. Uh, let me mention again, that run cycle that we just deleted is considered forward kinematics. Those hierarchical joint chains are just functioning the way that you would imagine. Uh, you move a parent and the child follows. You can move the child without the, the parent uh, being affected. But what if we want to move the reverse, right? Um, if we were trying to create a through space walk cycle and we had to pick the joints each individually and move them, uh, especially if, say, the character was planting its foot somewhere, that would be nearly impossible. But what if we could just place the foot and all of these joints rotated to accommodate the placement of the foot? That's what the IK gives us, the inverse kinematic. So we're talking about right that, that run cycle that we deleted was forward kinematics, standard hierarchical joint rig. Here we're doing inverse kinematics where we're going to create a handle. We'll create a handle down at the foot. We'll position the foot, and then all the joints of the leg will rotate to accommodate that position. Uh, makes it much more practical to create uh, many kinds of animation, but for this week's assignment, the through space walk cycle. Um, I'm going to, yeah, as I mentioned, I'm going to hide this guy. I thought he was on a lair. Let's add him to a lair, and we'll hide him away. And uh, I want you to do this. So from this point in the video until we finish this, you can come back here and do this several times until it makes uh, sense to you. I'm going to create uh, my skeleton. I'll say create joints. And let's just create something similar to the one that you've got. So we'll say hip, knee, ankle, and toe. That's very similar to the joint chain we were just looking at. And um, again, if I grab these and rotate them directly, that's called forward kinematics. But I can't just grab the foot right and and place it. That's, that's not the way that the forward kinematic works. So we'll create a handle down here that I can move and these joints will rotate to accommodate. Now the first thing that I need to do for the IK is to uh, express which way the joint is going to move. If this was a bird, uh, we'd want it that way or some type of complex chain. But this is our knee, so this is the way that it rotates. And it's the first thing that we need to do is come and say set preferred angle. So we're rotating just in the direction that we want our knee joint to function. We'll say set preferred angle. And on the rotate X, we can just zero that back out so that we can apply the IK. The uh, Maya will remember that that joint is rotating uh, in that X direction. Now let's create the IK. So we've got IK handle, not the spline, but just the standard uh, IK handle. And we'll click on the hip, and then I'm uh, I'm not holding shift. Uh, don't hold shift here, and I'm just going to click also on the ankle. So the hip and the ankle, not the toe. I just clicked on the hip. Now I'm clicking on the ankle. And if you look down here, we've got this IK, uh, 
I'm going to close that one. And so here is the new joint chain that I just created, right? There's the hip, there's the knee, there's the ankle. And now there's this uh, effector. It, this is a little shortcut to selecting the IK handle. And note that the IK is separate from the chain, and we want it that way. Now when I pick it, right, we can just position that IK handle, and you see that the joints of the leg are rotating to accommodate. So do that. Um, create just a four-joint chain. Set the preferred angle on the knee. Create the IK from the hip to the ankle. And then you can see that that IK handle is functioning. When we position or translate the IK handle, the joints contained within the chain rotate to accommodate that position. I'll hit undo. Now we've got a problem if we look at this in the side view, and that's IK. So play with that, uh, and there's, there's many, many uses for the IK just as it is standard here. But we're going to jump right into using uh, this IK along with a second one in an actual rig. So I've got this selected, and you can see as I begin to pull it up, we've got a problem. The toe falls below the ground plane, and when we are uh, have any character that's walking across the ground, you never want the foot or the toe to fall below the ground plane, right? Um, and uh, in future lessons and in the second semester, we talk a lot about uh, a rolling foot mechanism. Um, this is just going to be a standard flat foot mechanism for our robot. We'll be able to rotate it a little bit, um, but this is not a true uh, rolling foot. We're just going to keep this foot flat with a second IK. So, right, just demonstrating the problem, I raise that, and the toe falls below the ground plane. We will create, excuse me, a second IK. Create IK, ankle to toe. Now, when we have both IKs selected and we raise them, the foot stays flat the toe isn't falling below the ground plane, right? So I can raise that up. As we begin to develop more sophisticated rigs, it's helpful to think of rigging as a two-step process or two sides of the same coin. There's the mechanical solution of the rig, and then there's the ease of use solution to the rig. If, uh, and we have satisfied the mechanics. We've created uh, two IKs. When we select both of them, we can raise them. The joints rotate to accommodate the position of those IKs. And that second IK specifically solved the problem of the toe falling below the ground plane. So we have solved essentially the first part of rigging, which is solving the mechanical issue. Now we're going to move on to the second part, which is ease of use. So we don't want to have to fish around for these two IKs. We don't have to want to. We don't have to. We don't want to have to open the outliner and find the rig. The rig should be um, uh, out here. There should be some type of mechanism for selecting the rig, and it should be intuitively placed, so that the animator can open up a rig and, at a glance, determine uh, what is controlling what and how those controls work. So we'll move on to ease of use. First thing we'll do is just group these two together. So edit group, whoops, I hit on group, sorry. Uh, edit group, and now we've got this group one, and let's just, you know, we'll, I'll call it rig. So here is our, our rig, and I can pick it, and we can move it. So that's easier, right? We made it a little bit easier. We don't have to pick two things, we're picking just one thing. And then what we're going to do now is create a handle for it. As I mentioned just a moment ago, uh, when you open up a completed rig, you should see handles intuitively uh, placed. So let's create a handle for this, and then I'll show you how to offset it and position the pivot for this rig. We'll come to uh, window, uh, excuse me, display, transform display, selection handles. So for the rig, uh, this new group that I just created, a group that contains both those IKs. We're coming to display, transform, display, selection handles. Now, because it's a, a, a root 
level handle, it's this nice thick black uh, handle there. But that's not a good place for it. You don't want your handles contained within the geometry. If we turned on our foot here, that handle would be sitting in there. You want your handles and controllers offset from, from the model. Uh, that's just standard. Um, and so how do we move this, right? If I move it, it's executing. So we should actually call this repositioning. And I don't believe we've done that this semester. So uh, tune in and, and jot down some notes. I have this handle selected, but I want to position it to the rear of the character. So I will come into component mode. Here is component mode. And we'll come, uh, if you have geometry on, you want to turn off the vertexes. If we had geometry on, there'd be a ton of vertices here. So uh, I'm going to turn that off. And all the way down here is handle. Right, I'm in component mode and handles. So let me just mention, so in object mode, handle is first. So when we're talking about handles as objects, there are, they are selected first. When I come into component mode, handle is way down here. And I, now I can select it. You can determine that we're in component mode because we're seeing magenta and blue. And now I can move it. And we're going to slide it back. And we're going to slide it back a fair distance. And this will be clear uh, when you get into the next video. Uh, in terms of why we've slid these handles so far back. But we're sliding that back about that distance. And then here is where the most common mistake of this IK foot rig uh, comes into play. I want to reposition this pivot at the toe, but I have to do this in the object mode. So do not hit D here or insert or home to reposition this pivot. We want to go in, back into the object mode back into the object mode and here is the true pivot this is where the pivot is now I'll hit the D key and I'll hit the V key to snap that to the toe and now I'll hit the D key to get out of that so don't let this confuse you here's the handle back here because it's easy to select and it's not sitting within the character itself it's offset in this case we're offsetting it to the rear but the pivot for this group is at the toe and why is that well we can now pick this and you can see we can rotate that up onto the toe or in the upcoming lesson when we raise the foot you can have the toe drop a little bit so that is there I'm gonna do that all real quick for you what did we do we came into the side view we uh, grabbed joint we said hip knee, ankle, toe. We grab the uh, knee, hip, knee, ankle, toe. We grab the knee. We're rotating it in the direction. We'll come to set preferred angle. We'll zero that back out. Now we'll create our IK. And we can raise that. In fact, let me change the color. A little bit hard to see here, isn't it? Um, let's come to color. And yeah, that's easier to see. So we can raise that and our IK is functioning. You can see how easy that would be to make that run cycle. Whereas when we did the FK, we had to animate the hip, animate the knee, animate the ankle. Here, we could just animate this single IK and that would work. I'll hit undo to get that back. But we've got a problem. When we raise it, the toe falls below the ground plane. So we're going to solve that with a second IK that goes from the ankle to the toe. Now we've got two IKs and we've solved the mechanical problem. We've created something that allows us to very quickly control the leg. We solved the problem of the toe falling below the ground plane. So we've solved the mechanics of the rig. Now we want to solve the ease of use. We want to make it easy for the animator to make selections. Uh, let me undo back, get that flat. We'll group this. Uh, we'll turn on a handle, display, transform display, selection handle. Now I want to push this handle back if I just were to push it, it's executing the transform. So I want to come into component mode, 
Make sure handles are selected. Now I can select the handle and slide it back. We want to put the pivot at the toe, but not, not this pivot in component mode. So here is a common place for a mistake. Don't hit the D key, insert, or home key now before you've gone back to object mode. Right, so your pivot is here at the origin. We'll hit the D key to get into reposition pivot. We'll hold down the V key and with our middle mouse button, we'll snap that to the toe. Then we'll hit the D key again uh, to get out of that mode. And now we can see, at a glance, the animator can say, ah, there's a handle. And we can raise that foot up and down. And with that pivot there, we can also rotate up onto the toe. And if this was in the rear position, you can see your character can push off with the toe. Not a true ball roll, but uh, for a robot and for simple characters, um, this, is, this is fine. This is, this is adequate. So give that a shot. I would even say take 15, 20, 30 minutes and do that several times uh, until you're able to execute it because it's going to be a little bit challenging when we, when we do it on our actual robot. All right, uh, let me get the color back. I'm going to delete this, and we'll just come back to our robot, and we'll do it with our robot. OK, we, we want to demonstrate which way the knee bends, so we'll rotate it, and we'll say set preferred angle, and then we can zero that back out. Now we'll create our IK, skeleton, create IK handle. We're clicking on the hip and the ankle. I'm not holding the shift key down. I clicked on the hip, now I've clicked on the ankle. And you can test it. And voila, we've got a leg and we can move that leg around. I'll undo that back. But we've also got a problem. Now my character is not sitting on the ground plane here. Um, but you can see, even in this side view, if these feet were flat, that toe falls below the ground plane. So we've got a problem, and we'll solve it very simply with a second IK, skeleton, create IK. We'll go from ankle to toe. Now, uh, let me undo that. I clicked twice, and it thought I was picking this IK. So you may need to, to dolly around a little bit. And make sure you're getting that. And I'm not holding the shift key. So I've created a second IK from the ankle to the toe. If we look here in the outliner, right, I've got those two IKs. And you can see now we can raise that foot. And if we wanted to rotate, well, we can't rotate until we got the group. So, uh, but at least this gives us the flat foot, right? So we've solved the mechanics. Now we want to get to ease of use. Because you can see, if we open this character, the animator wouldn't necessarily know. Now, what am, how am I supposed to make this? Uh, uh, how am I supposed to make selections? What do the selections do? There's nothing to select. So we have to create some rigging handles. Come back. I'm going to grab these two. And I'm going to group them. Edit, group. So right away, this makes it a little bit easier in that I only have to select this one thing. And if you look here, right, the group contains the two IK handles. So let's turn on the handle. Right, we need a handle for this group. We'll come to display, transform display, selection handles. I want to snap this to uh, one of the existing joints and slide it back. Now, in, in the warm up example, we were just sitting on the ground plane and I just slid it straight back. Maybe your character, uh, like this one, wasn't rigged on the ground plane, and you'll need to do this uh, step here. What I want to do is hide my polys, because when I go to snap to the joints, all of those vertexes are also snappable items. So I'm going to hide my polys. How do we move it? Right, if I just move it, I'm executing it. We have to come into component mode, make sure handles are on, and I'm going to snap this Right. Let's, let's move it over here so you're not, you're not tempted. When you're snapping, uh, one common mistake, and I've been addressing this uh, with several students, we don't want to move the thing that's snapping. In fact, that's why I'm going to set it over here. 
you want to hold the V key and you want to you want to push onto the thing that you're snapping to, right? I'm I'm not over here. I'm right here. I'm going to hold down the V key and I'm going to middle mouse button snap that. So it's not like you're dragging it over, right? You're in the mode. It is selected, but we're over here V middle mouse button and I'm just kind of shoving onto that toe. And then I'll slide it back, right? I'm still in component mode. We'll slide it back a fair distance. And then here's that common mistake. Don't hit the home key, the insert key, or the D key until you've gone back into object mode. Now I'll hit the D key. And again, I don't want to, I don't want to drag. I want to hold down the V key. I'm over here. Middle mouse button, snap that. D key to get back out. And so now this leg is rigged. Right? If we bring back our geometry, we can raise that leg and uh, we can rotate and we can get a nice, I would call this a facsimile of a toe push. Right, You can get some natural movements even with a simple character like this. All right, let me just review. Uh, if you got it or you did it enough times, uh, you can skip to the end. If you want to watch it one more time, uh, I want to rotate this knee. I want to set the preferred angle. I want to then zero out the knee. I want to create an IK from the hip to the ankle. You can test that. That works, I'll undo it. We want to create an IK from the ankle to the toe. I want to grab both of those IKs. You can test it. The foot stays flat. Great. We will now move on to ease of use. We'll group it. We'll turn on the handle, display, transform display, selection handles. I want to reposition that handle, so I'll come into component mode. Handles are on. I want to snap it to this toe with polys on. They might get in the way. So I'll hide those, I'll grab this. I'm not, I, you know, I've got this over here. I'm not dragging it, it's over here. I'm gonna hold down the V key, middle mouse button, snap. Now I can slide it back. What I will do this time, I want it to line up with this guy. So I'll click on that yellow handle and then we'll V snap here. And so now they're perfectly in line. Common mistake, don't hit insert home or D at this point until you've gone back to object mode. Now we can hit the D key, V key, middle mouse button, snap, D key to get out of there. And you can see with our geometry back on that that works. Now it looks like there's, no, I was just sloppy in the way that I rotated. Uh, so that's rotating fine. And it's up and uh, you are ready. One last thing we can do is turn on the um, handle for the pelvis. So display, transform display, selection handles. And there's a lot of stuff in this uh, view. So you might want to hide, hide the polys at least. Come into component mode, pick that, and we'll slide it back. And again, if I want it to be lined up with these two, which I do, yellow handle, and then V middle mouse button, and now that's lined up, right? If we look in the orthographic view, these are lined up here to the rear of the character. And then the final thing we'll do is just get you in position to be able to start the next video. Uh, and that's just to give a little bit of bend. Now, overall, I can grab uh, all three of those handles and we can put him back on the ground plane. So we can just slide that down. So now it's sitting on the ground plane. And uh, right, with those IKs, that's what's giving us the ability to move the feet uh, separate from the rig. And this is our, uh, we're going to start in the mid-step. We're going to bend our character down a little bit. We're going to grab this left leg, and I'll show you. We'll slide it forward. And I want to slide it until the shin is straight up and down. And I want to grab the rear leg and slide that back. So the thigh is straight up and down. And so this will be our mid-step start for our through space walk cycle, just like that. Okay.
go back and practice the IK setup before you attempt to execute the next video. You really want to understand that setup, have it properly set up, and then the next video should go pretty smoothly. This is actually probably more complicated than actually animating the walk cycle. So hang out here, execute that a few times, make sure that you've got it, and then the next video will go very smoothly. All right, uh, questions in the forums. Have a good one.